In this presentation, we're going to look at reduced row echelon form. This is the uh, sort of form of a matrix, and if a matrix has the following conditions, you could say that it is reduced. Uh, sorry, in row echelon form, not reduced row echelon form. Um, so, row echelon form, a matrix that satisfies the following four properties. Now, I have them listed after this. Is said to be in row echelon form. I'm just going to sort of start off by drawing out a matrix here. We're just going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 5, 6, 1, 7, 8, 0, 0. Put some zeros in it. Uh, 1, 9. OK. Okay, so that we'll just sort of use a matrix like that. Uh, so the first property, all of the leading entries in each of the rows are the matrix of the matrix are one. The leading entries are the first look from the looking from the left hand side moving towards the right. The leading entry is the first non zero entry. So if it's a zero you can disregard the zero. So here the first, uh, the leading entry, the first non-zero entry is 1. 0, skip that, 1, OK, 1. Uh, here we have a 1. So the matrix I have here sort of fulfills that property that the leading entries are in, of, in each row of the matrix is 1. All the, OK, so that's each row of the matrix. What the highlighted I have the leading entry, the first non-zero entry, and in each case we have one as our ans uh, one as the value. So that's property one. If a column contains a leading entry, then all entries below that uh, leading entry are zero. So let's go back to our um, matrix again. So what has happened here? So let's just sorry, let's just read that out again. If a column contains a leading entry, then all entries below that leading entry are zero. So we get a little problem here. So we fulfill the first condition, but we don't fulfill the second condition. Now, so the first condition is this is the first leading entry here, and everything underneath it is zero. This is down the bottom, so you don't really have to worry about this one so much. Okay, um, that, it, that this the, the rule doesn't really apply for the ones at the bottom, essentially. So this leading entry here, one, this uh, on the third row, everything beneath that is zero. But here's the problem: this one here. That one there, that's the problem because underneath that we have a one and a zero. So while this had property one, it doesn't have property two. Okay, so let's just sort of um, look at what would be sought here. So let's say I had twos and stuff. So let's use that. So zero. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. OK. 0, oh no, oh yeah, I think that's 0. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK. So, in this particular instance, this is uh, this is a variant of the matrix, or this is sort of similar to the matrix I used before. Let's look at our leading entries. 1, 1, 1, and 1. Now again, you don't have to be too concerned about the 1 at the bottom. You can always use a uh, site as an exception. But here, all the uh, values below it are 0. Here, all the values below that are 0. And here, all the values below that are 0. So. This matrix here conforms to P1 and P2. 
Property 3. In any two consecutive non-zero rows, the leading entry in the upper row occurs to the left of the leading entry in the lower row. Well, let's just go back to our example here. So, starting from the bottom, the row just above that, uh, let's do it in green. So, starting from the bottom here, the row just above that, the leading entry, is to the left. Okay, so it's to the left of that one. Uh, the next row up, the leading entry, is to the left of that. And here, the leading entry is to the left of the one below that. So, this conforms to property tree as well. Okay, so the counter example might be one, two, three, four, zero, zero, one, five, zero, zero, uh, zero, one, six, seven. Yeah, that'll do. Um, no, I'll just keep consistent with what I've done before. Uh, zero. One eight. Now this would be a counter example, and you're probably guessing it. It is in the th second and third row that we have the leading value is here, but the uh, one uh, the uh, leading entry above that is uh, one, or is but it's to the right. And um, just a sort of remark, actually. It's this would actually that's that uh, doesn't conform to property tree, but also it breaks a couple of the other properties pre as well. So it also does not conform to property two because that's a leading one and it doesn't have zeros underneath either. So the, it's not the, the, the it, that's property tree is not the only thing that, that does not conform to that matrix. Um. So uh, all rows which consist entirely of zeros. Uh, up here at the bottom of the matrix. Okay, that's straightforward enough. So, essentially, you might often find that 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, uh, zero 1, um, 5, 6, 0, 0, 1, 7, and you might get just zeros at the bottom. Okay, and in that instance, if you have a matrix that is, or sorry, a row of the matrix is entirely at zeros. Uh, to uh, for, to for it to be in row echelon form, it should be at the bottom of the matrix. So uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's row echelon form. It's important to know that definition. It's important to know the properties. You know, it's important to know when something is in row, in row echelon form and close to it. And 